Welcome to Diary of a Ghost Hunter with your specialists, Anne Rekovich and Renata Daniel. Tonight we're going to be discussing about the Conjuring House saga and also paranormal equipment. Yes, I'm getting on my high horse yet again. Stay tuned for that and maybe some more. Welcome to the Diary of a Ghost Hunter podcast with your frightfully good hosts and paranormal investigators, Anne and Renata. Join the chaos weekly as we tell you what has inspired us, what cases we're investigating, what is driving us round the twist, and the true horror of what goes on in the background of being a ghost hunter. This is a Frightfully Good production. Hi, Anne, and welcome to Diary of a Ghost Hunter for this week. Oh, thank you, Renata. We're going out tonight. We're going to go and see a show about ghosts. I'm looking forward to it. Yes, should be nice. But At least there's no drama there. Well, I hope not, because <laughs> I tell you what, I'm completely over this whole Conjuring House thing. and I've had enough. So what's the latest? Look, I'm actually going to start uh, just very, very briefly right at the very beginning of probably one of the first posts that the new owner of The Conjuring House wrote. And if you don't know, there is a new owner of The Conjuring House. And it seems that everyone is up in arms uh, with the fact that this lady is there and really, they don't want her there, obviously. And we don't know her. Yeah, obviously there are many things that, you know, people are not happy with um, from how much it costs to go there to, you know, what you can do when you are there to the fact that she's not there when things are going on, so on and so forth. But... The very beginning of July, she she wrote this this letter out, um, this email out to everyone, and it starts Happy July. I'm hearing about a lot of hateful rumbling from people who are not in Conjuring House supportive moods by the sound of it. As you may know, TCH is the most famous haunted location in the world. We attract hundreds of people from around the globe per month to Bur Burryville, Burleyville Road, Island. Sorry, don't know what that is. Who, where that is? Sorry, Burl, Burl, yeah, Burlville. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> B, B Road. Yep. Yes, to partake in one of our fucking experiences. Oh, she used the f bomb. She did. Oh, it's okay. right there. Okay. I'm told that some members of the paranormal community and government officials keep attacking THC. TCH. The Conjuring House. Sorry. Uh, yes. There are many wonderful paranormal investigators and honest government people who have consistently supported the paranormal field. Many members of the paranormal community have commended the expansion of experiences at TCH to broaden the interest of paranormal activity that demonstrates the con continuity of consciousness. As to the others, whatever. We really do not care about people who abuse and attack people. We consider them evil and wicked people. In fact, we never want any person with these personality afflictions to visit us at TCH. So if you are among the wicked mood personality challenged, then stay away. We now have the kindest, hardworking people uh, with positive outlooks on our staff. Well, maybe we don't. Um, and it, it sort of goes on and on and on. It's a bit, of a, a bit of a rant. It is It is a bit of a rant. It was probably written in quite an inflamed state. Well, uh, they have been under attack from a lot, many, many, many people. Yes. And it's like uh, a frenzy of uh, hate, like one person will kick it off. And then, of course, the whole paranormal paranormal community wants to show para-unity and attack them as well. Yes. And I cannot confess as being one who has followed this uh, to the letter. So I haven't watched all of the videos as they come out and followed the story. But there are a couple of things that are of concern to people in the paranormal community. And probably the biggest concern is that uh, the lady that runs the Conjuring House has raised the prices to such, touch, such a height <laughs> that no one can afford to go. Yeah. And that when you do go, you can't. There, there's a whole caveat of things that you have to uh, agree to before you can film and put anything up on YouTube. And if you want to put anything up on YouTube, it is an extra fee. Yes, as well. And it has to be first of all okayed by the owner. Which I mean, I can understand having seen some of the YouTube videos that have been put out there by people. It could destroy people's businesses if they uh, hype it up and do make ridiculous claims about demons and I mean there's some obviously houses that that would be 
beneficial for because they're going to make more money if people think demons are there. But they remember some of our cases in True Hauntings where they've said there was somebody there that was a rapist and um, they they were imprisoning people and it was all stuff that was just made up by a, somebody who got a psychic impression, and I use that term very loosely, uh, that, that happened there and it wasn't true. But some of the stuff that has been said about the Conjuring House m m may also not be quite true, according to history. Mm, yes, that was your outside voice, Renata. Yeah, so it's, this, this is a, we a really... We need to do this one on True Hauntings. Yeah, this, I think now's the time to do it. This is a really, really difficult thing to be looking at right now, but the first and foremost thing that comes to our minds is that a lot of this stuff has become very, very personal to people. And I don't know why other than it, they're, they're taking it as personal uh, attacks upon themselves as well. Um, so when it, 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 it's all about the talk about the house and that the house has to be protected and the house's history has to be protected and all of this. But and the, yet the, actual the, conflict, <laughs> the conflict is very personal amongst yeah. human beings, amongst people who are uh, dealing with all of this. There's been hinted and, egos. And, and it's, yeah, it's become very, very personalised attack, which makes it very difficult for people who are wanting to book and are wanting to go, I really don't care what's happening in the background. I want to go to the Conjuring House. Yeah. And this is what happens. Anyone out there who has a business like this, please understand that this is what happens, that your people, your, your um, visitors to these sites, they don't really care about what's going on in the background. They want to come and enjoy an experience. Now, we have booked the Conjuring House for October and we, I guess, don't know at this stage whether we I will be able to happen. I, go in or not. I keep getting messages from people sending me links to things saying, you know, there's there have been people that have paid for investigations mm -hmm. or tours and they've turned up and there's been nobody there yeah. and... Uh, what was the other thing recently? Somebody, the caretaker of the house was <coughs> sacked or something mm -hmm. and the spirits told her to do it and the spirits told her not to give him any money that was owed to him and apparently he's owed thousands. I got to the stage, I just had to say to people, I don't want to hear this anymore because I don't know the truth of mm. what is happening. I yeah. don't know whether this this lady is truly having some sort of breakdown or whether it is a frenzied attack by paranormal investigators. Mm. And yes. we know they can be vicious because we've been on the other end of people who really know nothing, have been two seconds in the field, but decided to get on their high horse and attack us because they don't agree with what we're doing. Or blame <gasps> us or blame us for starting Remember that Oh yes. That, remember that oh, little... yes. <laughs> the Paranormal Awards. <laughs> That we won a couple of categories in. Apparently, we started that and mm -hmm. we nominated ourselves and then gave us our, ourselves the prize. There you go. It was an American thing. <laughs> it wasn't us, but you know, absolutely. Um, that, that created so that, a bit of. But that's rebuttal. how easy. That's how easy it can start. Yeah. And um, you know, this is at the moment everywhere. And I, I guess the point of bringing this up is that, in most cases. A lot of this stuff should be kept in the background and dealt with um, quietly. Because and we do it's, that. it's destroying so many people's um, personas online because they're getting involved in all of this. Um, and I understand totally that some people feel that it's important to go online and protect yourself from the point of view of or your family um, being yeah being seen by the people that follow you and say well this is my truth and I'm going to say this I guess we will see as time progresses how much damage this has done and caused yeah. to everyone around it's, it's three just months a, till we go it's a real shame that's that's just the whole thing it's a real shame but in saying that, and this is the hard thing, if people are doing things that are not right, do you hold back and say nothing or do you call them out and go, you are lying? You want to be really sure of your facts and have good solid evidence before mm. you did something like that because you could really destroy someone's business, their livelihood uh, and their reputation. Yeah. 
they've tried it with us. And and you but we and, just laugh and at other them. people <laughs> can destroy <laughs> yours. Yeah. Even in bringing it to the forefront, other people can then still destroy your reputation for actually saying something about yes, it. Exactly. <laughs> so you're stuck between a rock and a hard place. Yeah. Whatever you do, you just have to. Do what feels right to you and then be prepared to stand by it because the shitstorm will start. Yeah. But look, we want to wish everyone that's involved in this whole shamozzle. I want to wish them all a Valium. Um, <laughs> uh, Seriously. A, a, a calming down where you may... Take all, it offline. Yeah, or be able to sort of sit down at a table and have a discussion about this and save all of this um, before it really gets to a mess where people just go, I don't want or to go anymore. somebody goes and burns down the conjuring house. Oh, don't say that. Yeah. I look... Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, but you have a, another issue. I do. I... Um... <sighs> When you're studying out in the paranormal field, you want to buy equipment, you watch the ghost hunting TV shows, and you go, yeah, I want to have a crack at this. I sell paranormal equipment. I have Oz Paratech, which is Australia's largest online paranormal equipment store. You all know that. Uh, quite often, I will get people who will say to me, what should I start out with? And they will. I, I give them suggestions. You know, what do you want to do? Do you want to record stuff? Do you want to talk to them? Uh, do you want to check their environmental conditions? Or do you just want to have a good time? So based on that, I give them the information of what they should start off with. But sometimes we have people, and I have been guilty of this myself, who will see some new gadget on TV and go, that's it, that's what I want. I'm going to get that and I'm going to be the best ghost hunter on this earth. My suggestion is that you do not start off with the most expensive item on the list. But why? Why? I want that. It because looks pretty. they have seen on the TV shows how this particular item talks directly to the spirits and they get great responses. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not going to say who this person is, but I really would want to thank them for the inspiration for this week's Diary of a Ghost Hunter. Uh, they did buy an ovilus, which is quite expensive. It's $1,000. And they have turned it on and they've sent me a message saying it's just spitting out random words. It's not making any sense. Um, they've tried restarting it. They've gone into a, um, a question answer mode, I think it is. And it just keeps randomly lighting lights up and um, they want to know if it's broken. Is there something wrong with it? And... Uh, I, I sort of messaged back to them and said, first off, uh, I don't use this particular ov ovulus a lot. I have an older one, which I loved. Uh, I asked, have you read your instructions? Have you checked the sensitivity settings on the ovulus? And you have one of the, the uh, yep. digital ones. Mm -hmm. And there are settings that will uh, pick up on the sensitivity of it. And I sort of got the gist that maybe they haven't done a lot of ghost hunting before. And I asked them what other paranormal equipment did they use? And also that, you know, this is an experimental device. There is no guaranteed line to the other side. And Wh the, what? Well, I know, right? What? There is no guaranteed connection. But I've paid a thousand dollars. I, you I, want a direct I line to God. expect to speak. Get my Jesus Ouija board out and talk to him. <laughs> so I... I, I also asked, did you set your intentions and, and things like that for them to uh, see how they've handled using the ovulus? Mm -hmm. And I did get a reply from them saying that, no, the only other equipment they've used before this is cat balls. Right. So they've gone from cat balls to the ovulus. They said they've seen that uh, there's lots of YouTubers that are using. They always seem to get responses to their question. I bet they get uh, better results with the cat balls. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, so uh, they've, they've not looked, I asked them what sort of research they'd done before uh, getting this yeah. piece of equipment and have they researched how to use it and... Yeah, look, it always looks easy when you're looking at the YouTubers and the documentaries, documentaries and uh, all of the people that go out with this equipment because they seem to get hits every single time. But that's because it's paranormal entertainment. And I did say to them, remember that when you're seeing these YouTube videos or these programs, there is something called editing. 
Mm. where they can cut out the dead, boring bits where it jabbers away and says nothing that makes sense whatsoever. Mm. Uh, sometimes some of them may even be a little bit deceptive and cut out an answer from something else and put it in to make it look like the ovulus has answered. Now, I'm not saying that the ovulus doesn't work. There's probably not enough uh, data on saying whether that truly works or truly does not work. But it certainly can be very interesting when you get a string of responses that are very relevant, not make it fit, but are very relevant. So I sort of tried to talk them through and I, I asked, what was your purpose for using this equipment? Have you just turned it on and are expecting something to happen? Have you called someone in specifically to talk to you? Uh, uh, is there information about something that you are trying to get? And it's a bit like you don't pick up a telephone and randomly dial numbers and go, OK, talk to me now. I want you to tell me everything I need to know. And the person on the other end goes, uh, no, feck off or just doesn't bother to talk to you and walks away. So you need to have a clear thought process when you go into this. Set your intentions. Know who you want to talk to. Know what it is you want to talk about and ask for them. Think of these people as the, the spirit world as real people who you are asking to have a conversation with. You are asking to learn from them. Don't expect it. Don't demand it. Because I know if somebody did that to me, I'd just go, um, no. So, yeah. And not everything that comes out of the ovulus is no. going to uh, be something that is a message. Yeah. Don't make everything fit. You know, don't, you know, if you're asking for someone's name and they and the ovulus says cucumber. pillow. Or cucumber. Or cucumber. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, was that the last thing you ate? Oh, can I smell cucumber somewhere here? Was that your favourite food? You've asked for a name, and you you've want gone to get to and you've gone everywhere else because it has said cucumber. Anyways, what I did is I, I sort of directed them to our YouTube series that we did on how to become a ghost hunter and said, you know, go through all of that, start learning from some reputable ghost hunters like Lloyd Albach or Steve Parsons, uh, and learn the craft and. Instead of dumping all over them and saying, oh, you're silly, you know, you've, I said, you've actually put your feet on the path to become a proper paranormal investigator by learning all of this stuff. And congratulations. We want to encourage everyone to do things the right way and to learn. So I, I was really pleased that this person did reach out to me and ask these questions. And that's what I do with Ozparatech is I try to answer questions and help people wherever I can. But sometimes we just don't have the time. Speaking of which, we don't have the time tonight to stay on for too long. <laughs> we are heading off to a show, as I said, and I can hear my husband out there banging on the pot. So I think it might be time to wrap it up. Mm. Anything else you want to add? Um, just that we are in the midst of finalising our plans for our trip to the USA, oh my uh, including Salem. <laughs> and we have a ton of places that we are going to and investigating. So uh, check and stay tuned because we have some of the most amazing places ahead that we are going to be investigating. And uh, we're going to try and take you on the ride as much as we can uh, by lives, by photographs. Where by we are including... allowed to. We're not going to do anything that if we've been told not to film there or not to do lives, we will not. And our, our poo bars might get to see some, but that would be about it. Yes, and if you want to become a, a Patreon member and get all the goss and all the behind-the-scenes stuff, join our Patreon at Anne and Renata. Yep, uh, and... P-A-T-R-E-O-N. Just search Patreon, Anne and Renata, and you'll find us. For $10 a month, mm -hmm. you can get uh, the the one-on-ones, or not the one-on-ones, the uh, behind-the-scenes and our two-monthly, bi-monthly chats and get-togethers and uh, all outtakes. All of the stuff. And, yeah. So, yeah, we better get cracking in. We've got to get on and get do some work. Uh, thanks for joining us. Share it around. If you want to buy us a coffee, please do buy me a coffee. Anne and Renata, we'd love that. In the meantime, we'll see you on the dark side. Stay spooky. And don't, don't be, be a dickhead. dickhead. Bye. Bye.